Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. I come before you today and I'm bringing you a, a little bit of an interesting take, my take on um, our our redneck redneck roots, if you will. You know, I do live in Texas and might have uh, some redneck in my background and, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I can't I can't change that. I can't change my family. And um, so many of you, I don't know where you, what perspective you come from. Uh, you may feel like you're very far removed from such a thing and that's way beneath you. But, um, you know, when you, when you look at the, some of these stories in the Bible, you know, um, it does make you wonder sometimes, you know, who these people are and um, what's going on. So you got Adam and Eve and um and then it's right off at the very beginning you have children that um have to have uh re- relations with their own brothers and sisters to populate the earth if you view that Adam and Eve are the only male and females created so but but I do challenge you uh, on that one uh, like I said in an earlier podcast um I do not believe that's the case. I believe there were other humans created outside the garden, and Adam and Eve were to, especially Adam was supposed to be the priest to those other people, and uh, those are the children that um, Enoch and Cain had to choose from, and, and the other children that Adam and Eve had, um, and that I don't believe they had to violate Torah immediately. But many of us have read and looked at that passage and thought, wow. Um, who do they go marry? You know, as a kid, I certainly did. And I'm like, well, they must have married their sisters. Gross. So you got that. And then the other interesting story is the Onan Tamar Judah story. And if you're not familiar with that story, it's pretty fascinating. You find it in Genesis 38. I recommend going and reading Genesis 38. And uh, in verse 9, it says, And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass, when he went into his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest he should give the seed to his brother. So you got this, you, you, you tell me. Um, and, you know, I'm going to set this story up, and you tell me when it sounds redneck. You've got uh, two brothers, and one of the brothers dies. And so you've got this woman who never had children, her name's Tamar, never had children, can't have children anymore. Um, she's, a, she's a widow, and the command, which is biblical, and it's in the text, that the fathers, um, you know, that the, uh, not the father, but the, but the bro- other brother is supposed to go do his duty um, so that she can have a child to carry on her line, to help her in her old age, you know, help provide for her, you know, uh, make sure she's good. It's kind of like their Social Security. That's what their son was. And so the father tells this to happen, and, uh, and um, you know, and that, that's a whole weird conversation, but the um, father tells uh, the son to go perform this act, and the son's like, okay, but I'm not sharing this. And he doesn't. So then Judah comes back and is kind of defending his son and just like, well, um, you, know, you can just live here and stay with me. I'll take care of you. I'll treat you like family. Um, but he wasn't getting it. She knew what the scripture said and that this was supposed to happen. And uh, she's like, all right. She walks off and she d- devises a plan. And basically, here's the plan. She knows Judah likes, and so I'm going to take this story and I'm going to put it 21st century America. Good old, good old America, USA. And so in good old America, USA, here's kind of how I see this story happening. Old Judah, he's kind of like Boss Hogg from Dukes of Hazzard. And he's driving, except none of these people were white. I know that. So I know. They are, um, um, they are not looking like European American people. You know, we know that. So, but just for fun, in my story, I'm making him boss hog, and he, because this is from my childhood, and he's uh, driving a big white caddy with longhorns on the front. Maybe he's got sheep horns or something. You know, big white caddy convertible, and he goes to Vegas in this white caddy convertible wearing his white suit. He's going to Vegas to party. 
and have a good time. He's gambling, he's high rolling, he's living the life. And uh, he meets a stripper while he's in Vegas. And uh, she's a nice looking girl. And, you know, it's kind of like what we see in the movies. Things happen. Next thing you know, you cut to a scene and um, you see she's, as I wake up, uh, she's uh, looking through his clothes. She's grabbing his wallet. She's grabbing his keys. And he's like, you can't do that. And she's like, um, well, my services have a fee, sir. He's like, I'll just pay you money. No, nope, this is what I, this is what I'm going to take. And so he basically, he uh, goes back into town, you know, uh, without his signet ring, it's going to be probably, for sure, if nothing else, it's like a guy not having his wallet. It's a pretty big deal. And, uh, you know, and then um, she comes back to him later when somebody sees she's pregnant and they're like, oh, look at her. She done messed around. She, she done did you wrong. She making you look bad. And so he calls her in. He's like, what's going on here? You know, they're telling me you're doing this. We're fixing to have to take care of this biblical style. And, uh, and then she confronts him and is like, well, does this belong to you? Does this look familiar? And so um, anyway, if that's not a redneck story, I don't know what is. So that sounds like um, some crazy story. And when I've said this before in a group, sometimes people get a little offended and they're like, Oh, you can't say that about our forefathers. And I'm like, well, <laughs> some of these things that they did were pretty crazy. And if you want to call them redneck, if you want to call them uncouth, if you want to call them non-traditional, okay, it's, but they're redneck. So when it comes down to it, I kind of came to this conclusion, and this is, not, uh, this is kind of different from what I normally do, but I, I think that... Um, Redneck just basically, okay, well, let me back up. Uh, it's like this. If you're driving down the road and you're going 60 and the speed limit is is 55 and somebody passes you on the left and they're going faster than you, you're like, whoa, look at that maniac, that crazy driver. They're going to kill somebody. So when uh, somebody goes around you, you know, you kind of kind of have that attitude to them and um but you know if you are needing to go somewhere or you're a little bit late or whatever and you're passing everybody and then suddenly i mean you're you're not a maniac <laughs> you're just you just need to get somewhere so i think this redneck thing kind of works that way too so there there are we've got a lot of redneck ways unfortunately <laughs> all of us do we have a lot of things that aren't right uh, we have a lot of things that we do that aren't correct um, but, but so often we, if we do it, it, it's okay. We don't call it bad or wrong or, or, uh, backwards. Uh, it's okay. Cause we did it. But if someone else does it, oh my gosh, now you're talking redneck. Oh, can you believe her? Did you see what she did? Did you hear what she just said? So all of a sudden we get real country, um, real fast with things. So anyway, I know it's a little different, <laughs> and it's a little bit different spin on some of this, but, uh, but I do think today in our modern society, we tend to think that we are so much better than this, and we're so far above some of these people, these people, uh, that we read in, uh, especially the Old Testament, some of the crazy stories uh, that we see, and you know, especially this one, this one's in the lineage of Christ, the lineage of Yeshua. Um, so it's, uh, it's pretty interesting, uh, to, to kind of look at it at that lens, but, but, you know, in the end, you know, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that he has built a, a kingdom of, of, in a kingdom of priests that are, uh, imperfect, which, which I am definitely in those ranks and which gives me hope and it should give you hope too, um, that, um, that, that he can work with, uh, with our brokenness. And I think the theme is, though, that we should be getting better all the time. And I think you see that all through these Old Testament stories. I think the young Abraham and Sarah are very different than the, young, the, the older Abraham and Sarah. They matured, they, they grew up, and that's, that's what we're supposed to do. So anyway, thank you for listening to Shabbat Lounge.